Hey, Battle Community. Today, I want to do a video I've never tried before, and I'm going to be talking about Elton John, and not just Elton John. I'm going to be talking about his lyricist, Bernie Taupin, and doing a list of my five favorite Bernie Taupin lyrics and what I consider to be the five worst Bernie Taupin song lyrics. So get into the best first, uh, my top five. Um, number five, I'm going to start off with Burn Down the Mission, which of course is off the Tumbleweed Connection album. And I love the imagery of this song, which seems to be about, it doesn't give you any clear specifics other than the person narrating or the protagonist, as it were, in this song is up against some sort of um, larger power um, that as, is exerting authority over his family or oppressing uh, he and his family. And so he is deciding to take matters into his own hands and he is burning it all down to the ground. And at the end, he seems to be getting arrested, but feels it was all worth it, feels he was justified for his violent actions um, to save his family from this oppression that is taking place. And I love um, just the way that Bernie paints a picture in this song. Um, everybody now bring your family down to the riverside, look to the east to see where the fat stock hide. Behind four walls of stone, the rich man sleeps. It's time we put the flame torch to his keep. Burn down the mission if we're going to stay alive. Watch the black smoke fly to heaven. See the rain, red flame light the sky. Burn down the mission. Burn it down to stay alive. It's our only, only chance of living. Take all you need to live inside. Just those early Bernie Taupin lyrics were so full of colorful imagery, drama, uh, in a case like this, uh, violence. Um, but you definitely, you know, you sympathize with whoever this um, protagonist is. And I love the way that the music fits so um, perfectly with the lyrics as well. You've got softer moments where it's just a gentle piano and then it builds into a crescendo uh, in the chorus. Uh, I think the orchestration is done very tastefully. Uh, one of my favorite all-time Elton John songs and definitely one of my favorite Bernie lyrics. Number four, I am going with Goodbye Yellow Brick Road off the Goodbye Yellow Brick Road album. I've always enjoyed the idea of this you know, gigolo or whoever um, being taken out of his element, um, having a romance with somebody who maybe they're famous, maybe they're just rich, um, they've got a lot of influential friends, and it's sort of like the town mouse and the country mouse um, story, if they were to be in a relationship together. Uh, but Bernie just saying, you know, I don't need all of this, um, you know, fancy living. Uh, I don't need, you know, the city light. I'd much prefer to be back uh, where I came from. He doesn't want to be in the penthouse anymore. He's not impressed by... Um, the riches and the influence and the high society uh, trappings uh, that his lover uh, seems to enjoy and is surrounding herself with. Um, you know, you can't hold me forever. I didn't sign up with you. I'm not a present for your friends to open. This boy's too young to be singing the blues. It's just a great way to characterize that whole relationship. Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road, where the dogs of society howl. You can't plant me in your penthouse. I'm going back to my plow, back to the howling old owl in the woods, hunting the horny back toe. Just that wordplay that he uses, I think is just so brilliant, so effective. I finally decided my future lies beyond the Yellow Brick Road, which of course is a Wizard of Oz reference, but I've just really enjoyed um Bernie and some of the stories that he tells, some of the tales that he weaves in his lyrics. Um, and this one is a great song off of my favorite Elton John album. Okay, my number three pick is going to be a track off of Elton's 1982 album, Jump Up. 
And it is the John Lennon tribute track, Empty Garden, Hey, Hey, Johnny. If you know anything about the backstory behind this track, uh, Elton and John Lennon were very good friends, and as was Bernie Taupin. And Elton and John Lennon, they collaborated as it were, on John's number one hit, Whatever Gets You Through the Night. And it was actually a result of a bet that um, Elton John had made with John Lennon that if that track hit number one, then John would agree to perform with Elton John at a Madison Square Garden concert, which he did in 1974. That was sort of the end of John's lost weekend. He reunited with Yoko Ono um, after that concert. And the rest, as it were, was history. And so in the aftermath of John Lennon's assassination, Bernie Taupin penned this very moving tribute to John Lennon. I think the lyrics, um, you can tell there's a lot of um, loss and mourning that uh, he and Elton John went through. Um, but he really speaks for all Beatles fans uh, in the lyrics to this song. When he talks about what happened here is the New York sunset disappeared. I found an empty garden among the flagstones there. Who lived here? He must have been a gardener that cared a lot, who weeded out the tears and grew a good crop, and now it all looks strange. Uh, and I love that line. It's funny how one insect can damage so much grain. And there's an anger there, but there's also some remorse. There's some fond remembrances um, of John. They take some lyrics from Dear Prudence, which was a, a John Lennon track from the White Album, uh, where he talks about, you know, can't you come out to play? But just a very, very uh, tastefully done, very moving tribute to John. And I think the lyrics are just fantastic. Some of the best that Bernie ever wrote. Okay, number two, I am going with Tiny Dancer off the Madman Across the Water album. This song is um, written for, I believe it was the woman who eventually became Bernie Taupin's wife. And like some of the greatest Bernie Taupin lyrics, you have a lot of very vivid imagery, a lot of romantic um, sorts of overtures that Bernie is making in this song. Uh, very descriptive in terms of blue jean baby, LA lady, seamstress for the band, pretty eyed, pirate smile, you'll marry a music man, ballerina, you must have seen her dancing in the sand, and now she's in me, always with me, tiny dancer in my hand. Perfect, perfect lyrics. And Again, I think Bernie uh, is best when he is not only crafting a story, but he's painting a picture for you. And I think never so beautifully as uh, in this song. And it's so very early 1970s too, talking about Jesus freaks out in the street, handing tickets out for God. Uh, turning back, she just laughs. The boulevard is not that bad. Uh, piano man, who could that be? He makes a stand in the auditorium. Looking on, she sings a song, the words she knows, the tune she hums. Uh, but it is such an evocative track. I love it. Always been one of my favorite Elton John tracks and a great, great Bernie Taupin lyric. Okay, my number one favorite Bernie Taupin lyric is going to be from the Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy album. I am picking Someone Saved My Life Tonight as... All the other songs on this album, it's a piece of autobiography, Bernie writing about he and Elton's early days when they were struggling songwriters, trying to make it big, uh, doing some Tin Pan Alley type songwriting. Um, and it also talks, you know, I think this song more than any is really focused on Elton John and what he went through, kind of embracing uh, his sexuality. He was engaged to be married at one time early on uh, in his career, and Bernie convinced him to break it off. Um, you almost had your hooks in me, didn't you, dear? You nearly had me roped and tied, altar-bound, hypnotized, sweet freedom whispered in my ear. I mean, it's poetry, brilliant poetry, and I love it. Um, you know, Bernie, even from the opening lyrics, when I think of those East End lights, muggy nights, the curtains drawn in the little room downstairs, prima donna, Lord, you really should have been there, sitting like a princess perched in her electric chair. I mean, again, it's perfect storytelling. 
And he's writing essentially, you know, the, uh, as it were, success story or what it took to be successful uh, just throughout this whole album, what he and Elton went through. Uh, definitely they were struggling, uh, starving artists at the beginning and then eventually uh, hit it big. But I, I, I think this is one of his greatest lyrics, obviously because it's my number one, but... Um, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that for me, for Bernie. So that is my top five. All right, now we're going to flip that coin. We're going to talk about what I consider to be Bernie Toppin's five worst lyrics of all time. And I want to start with a track off of the much maligned Caribou album, uh, I think of Elton John's early albums, this one, I think just because it came after the brilliant Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, there was bound to be a, a step down in quality. But I'm talking about Solar Prestige A Gamon, a nonsense song. I'm not even going to bother reading any of the lyrics because none of it makes any sense. It's almost like he took John Lennon at the end of Sun King, the track off Abbey Road, makes up some bullshit Spanish. It, it's not really Spanish. He's singing it, just making up nonsense words. And here we've got an entire song of that. I'm sure it was cute. I'm sure he and Elton had a laugh over it. But to me, it's just not that funny. It's kind of annoying. Uh, it's kind of an inside joke, I guess, but it's not one that lands. Um, I just find it really torturous to kind of sit through. Don't enjoy it. And my number five worst Bernie Toppin lyric. Number four, I am taking a song off of the Blue Moves album. And I like this double album. I know there's some people who think it's boring, who think it's a little too subdued. It's too much of a bummer. I actually like this album a lot. However, this is a track that I do not care for. I'm very sorry. Uh, and it's called Where's the Shoe Ra? No idea what a shoe ra is. I've tried to Google it. Nobody knows what a shoe ra is. It seems to be another bullshit word that Bernie Toppin came up with. Maybe thinking is clever. I have no idea. Um, but the lyrics do not make any sense. She grows, she's grown like pampas, pampas, tail in the wind, she's sinful and spiteful, she's all girl, woman, and mother, she's had my children, and she's been my lover. So where's the shura, she sang, you know, I hear it again, my friend, where's the shura, she came upon it, waiting to sing her back, because she likes to sing about where's the shura, she sang, over and over and over, where's the shura she sang? And it sounds even worse. If you've heard the song, it's even more grating on the ears when you hear Elton trying to um, sing and interpret uh, these lyrics. You know, it's got a gospel flavor to it, but these lyrics are far from anything spiritual. Um, and I do not like it. Bummer, because I like the rest of the album, but this one... I always have to skip over. Okay, my number three. I am picking a song off the Ice on Fire album. 1984, maybe? 85? I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, it's a song called Soul Glove. Soul Glove. Already with that title, you know uh, it's bad news. Um you say today was not so easy. Pressure tends to get the best of you. Well, don't let them break your spirit. Keep the faith and you will come on through. And then you've got the lyrics and slip into my soul glove. Pull it on. We got a tight fit. Never take it off. And baby, if the seams rough and honey, if the skin's soft, you and me, we go together. Oh, like a soul glove. Yeah, I don't even want to know what a soul glove is. Um, I'm not even going to go there, but it's just silly, ridiculous, cheesy. Um, I think that whatever he is trying to go for here, uh, I don't think it lands. I think it's definitely a blemish 
on Bernie Toppin's uh, lyrical catalog. Um, just, I don't know. Is it like a sexual innuendo? I have no idea. What the hell? I've never heard the word or the term soul glove before. That's my number three. Number two, I am taking a track off the Breaking Hearts album from 1983. Let's see, all these early Elton John albums, I, I, I can tell you when every 1970s album of his was released, but these 80s ones, just because they're not great albums, it doesn't really matter. In early 80s, let's say. Anyway, song off Breaking Hearts called Lil Frigerator. Lil Frigerator, Lil Refrigerator for, uh, that's what I think Lil Frigerator was short for. I mean, come on, Lil Frigerator. Well, what is Lil Frigerator about? Well, it's about a woman who is very icy cold, and so he calls her Lil Frigerator. And I don't know why, Lil Frigerator, you're so cold. Go, Lil Frigerator, go. Get away from my soul. Lil Frigerator, you're so cold. She's calculated with the kiss of death, got a digital mind, an expensive breath. She's an empty shell. You're a piece of meat. Just another statistic on her readout sheet. So basically, it's a poor man's goodbye, Yellow Brick Road. And I mean, the song itself to hear, the song's not bad. I mean, Elton does fine with the arrangement, but... You know, honestly, and I know Bernie Toppin got heavily into Coke, uh, got heavily into the drink. But if you want people to think that you're not a Coke addict, probably you don't want to come up with lyrics like this, which are just borderline embarrassing. I mean, they're, it's a hack job for sure. It's total hack work. Um, Bernie, you know, I mean, we're going from some of the 70s masterpieces to a piece of garbage like this. And I understand you can't write Tiny Dancer every time out. Uh, you can't write Take Me to the Pilot every time out. You can't write your song. Not every song is going to be that brilliant. But, you know, I just shake my head at a song like this because it's just so bad. Okay. The number one worst Bernie Toppin lyric. I'm going to the Jump Up album. Had a great song on there now, not so great song. And I'm talking about the abomination called I Am Your Robot. Yes, Bernie Toppin wrote a song called I Am Your Robot. And the lyrics are just as bad as the title would suggest. I've been beaming aboard her for a light year from a strange craft. She's got a subtle touch on the silver key to a clockwork heart. What? I am your robot. I am your robot. I am your robot, man. I am your robot. I am your robot. I am your robot, man. You went and flipped the switch and turned me positive when I was negative. I've been stumbling around like a metal man on the graveyard shift. I am your robot, I am your robot, blah, blah, blah. I am your robot, and I'm programmed to love you. My serial number is 44357. Like, enough. I know Star Wars was big in the early 80s, but there is no reason other than being coked out of your mind that you would come up with lyrics like this. And again, Elton tries his best, but I, you know, can you imagine Elton sitting there? What you got, Bernie, and Bernie giving him this drivel to try to put music to and sing to. But I just, I feel bad for Bernie that this was the best that he could come up with in the early 80s. Uh, and I think he did eventually pull himself together, but this had to have been rock bottom for Bernie. Definitely his worst lyric. I defy you to pick another one that is this bad. Uh, and I love Bernie Toppin's lyrics, so kind of kills me to have to do a list like this and know that there are song lyrics like this out there that actually got put on a record, but they did. So anyway, that's my yin and my yang, the good and the bad of Bernie Toppin. If you got any other suggestions you want to put down in the comment section, feel free. Thanks for watching and take care.